Okay, so if you don't know, YouTube is making a ton of changes to podcasting. And what I mean by that is the video element of your show is gonna become really, really important. And I think this is a time for most podcasters to start monetizing at an even higher level. So today I wanna get into some of the main things you should be doing as a podcast host. Like these are some of the basics you have to do if you wanna grow your show and monetize. The first thing you gotta have on point is your branding. YouTube really stresses this that, you know, like if you have old channel, you can use that same channel if the audiences are gonna be, you know, the same thing. Start a new channel if you're kinda going into a whole new market. And I think this is really important because I know a lot of podcasters who have multiple shows. And really the danger is having everything on the same channel could stunt your growth. So like if one of your audience is people that love movies, another audience is people that love music, you should create separate channels because if you put all that content on the same YouTube channel, you might think, and this, this could be even true, that some of your listeners from the music show listen to the movie show. That could be true. The reality is you got to brand this correctly. Like some of them might not always want to watch that. And then the algorithm doesn't know what to feed those people. So it's good to kind of separate your audiences. And this sounds so like counterproductive, but I think in the long term, it's a good thing because as you start to put out more video content, YouTube's algorithm is way better than any other discovery tool we have for podcasters. So you getting discovered on YouTube is massive. And sometimes it's going to have to be separate. I think we should focus on the branding element over like this is way more important than having a ton of listeners or a ton of subscribers. I think for us, the branding is a bigger deal, right? We have to have really good presentation on our show. We have to have really good content and all of that stuff. That's way more important, in my opinion, than having 50,000 subscribers. Because I know a lot of YouTubers right now that have a ton. Like, I know a guy on YouTube that has, I don't know him personally, but I used to watch his content. And this dude has 160,000 subscribers. Not one of his videos in the past, like, two months has gone past 10,000 views. And that kind of shows you that... You can have a ton of subscribers and still not be successful. So I would hate for podcasters to go over to YouTube with that mindset of, oh, I got to get a ton of subscribers, thinking that that guarantees you views. The truth is, from what I'm seeing, it does not. And YouTube is telling us that the branding is going to be what really brings us new listeners and helps us get discovered. Now, under the tab of branding, it really gets into how to set up everything, right? Like how to package your content. And in packaging, they talk about keywords, titles, descriptions, what we know as SEO. This is really important because it helps you get discovered. And one thing I noticed on the thumbnail side is it's good to have like a specific format that you use for all your thumbnails. Because if it's a, a recurring show, like you put out an episode every week on Tuesday or whatever, you want your audience to be able to see that thumbnail and recognize it. It's kind of like how Game of Thrones will always have the same kind of logo. Now they switch things up, but it's usually the same thing, right? Same presentation. That's what you want to do with your podcast. Now that's for your full content. Now for the clips, you want to have a template for that as well. And basically when it comes to thumbnails, create templates for it. That's basically the point there is create a thumbnail template. I would suggest, and this is what I'm planning on doing personally too, is I'm doing it already. Get a designer to create templates for you. That way you have a template for when you do solo shows, maybe a template for when you have guests and then a template for your clips, right? And you could just plug in different people's photos and names or whatever and keep it simple. Don't use Canva. I know, I know it's tempting. I know that's what all of us want to use, even me and myself, but don't use Canva because everybody's going to have those same templates. Everybody uses those same templates. So unless you can design it yourself and make it look really good, I would suggest putting some money into this. I don't think that's a bad investment. Pay 25, 50 bucks to somebody on Fiverr to take care of this. And they can make you some amazing templates. And that could set up your show to really be presented differently. Because what you got to know is they want you to split things up, right? So keywords should be something that you use based on like you have like a basic, right? Basic keywords for your show. So whenever you post your podcast focuses on these main keywords because that's going to help you continue to be discovered in one specific category. Then you have the other keywords that are specific to that episode, right? For example, my basic keywords for Pod Central would be podcast tips, podcast marketing, podcast, blah, blah, blah. 
Then after like 10 of those, 15 of those keywords, I would then put in keywords that are specific to that specific episode. Like for this one, it'll say YouTube marketing or podcasting on YouTube and all of that stuff. Then you get more specific, but you want to have your basic keywords and then your episode specific keywords. And it's the same thing for your clips as well. Then chapters are really important because you want people to be able to find the parts in your content that they want to watch. Like there are certain shows that do this really, really well. And think of chapters as segments of the show. And you got to use timestamps and put that in the description of the video. So then people can easily see the markers. I watch YouTube on my TV a lot and I can literally see the chapters on my screen. And it's really, really convenient because I don't have to sit and watch an hour and a half interview. I can scroll right to the part that I want to watch. Now that might seem like you're not getting a lot of watch time or whatever, but what it does is it gives people the chance to find the part of the content that they actually want to watch. Don't force them to watch a bunch of stuff. They just don't care about like avoid all of that by using chapters. And then with the full versus eclipse, you want to post a full episode. That's important. And then have clips from the show. And this is good for most podcasts because most shows are at least 45 minutes long. And what you should be doing is taking two to three clips from that. So like two or three segments that are seven to like 12 minutes and then posting those in a no whole nother playlist, different thumbnail, different description. You know, you can add the chapters in there, everything. So really YouTube has given us an entire formula that we can follow to kind of make this really, really easy. Like the whole packaging thing is very, very straightforward. It's honestly the easiest part of the process because once you make the templates, you have your basic keywords, then all you have to do is edit your video so that you have the full hour clip and then you got three clips from that full episode that you then you have a playlist for the show and then a playlist for your clips. Simple. All right, so now let's talk about the promotion strategies. I love how YouTube gave us the guidelines for how we should be promoting. Like this is what podcasting is missing. To be honest, is like a specific formula to promote your stuff. They start with cross promotion. I think this is one of the best things to do. In fact, I'm looking for other channels to collaborate with. I promote you on my channel. You promote me on yours and we can grow. All right. So I'm looking for content creators, people in that, you know, creator economy space. If that's one of you, you know, if that's you watching this. Let's connect, hit me on Twitter at Chris podcasting, or just leave a comment down below under this video. Now cross promotion is good. We already do this on podcasts where you do a podcast swap. Now we're just doing YouTube swap. So I think you should have a trailer and that's a whole nother video. I think you should have a trailer for your show so that you can send that to other YouTubers to promote your show on their YouTube channel. I think that would be genius because that's what I would want from somebody else where I could just play it in the show or a script that I could read to promote you or whatever. Super simple. Now, shorts is something that YouTube has put a lot of effort into, you know, they're putting a lot of work into competing with TikTok and Instagram. Shorts are good because they'll help your channel blow up. Like I posted shorts and they've done really, really well. And I get subscribers from it and engagement and all of that. I think it's even smarter to have some of your shorts be clips from full episodes. And then in the description, you just put a link to the, where they can find the clip or the full episode. It's very easy to do a lot of this stuff. I think creating a formula is going to be what most podcasters need and getting good video and all of that stuff. And I'll tell you, if you want to know the video setup I'm using, it's an iPhone. I'm literally using the iPhone. I got my computer to the left of me right here so I can see my notes and stuff and see myself as I record. And this is how I'm doing my podcast. I'm literally going to take this on the road in 2023 and interview founders around the country doing the same thing. So I'm telling you, it's very easy stories they have stories on there like every platform does community is something that's good because you can post polls you can kind of tease upcoming episodes and like the community tab is really a good place for you to like put a screenshot of an interview you did on zen zencaster or riverside squadcaster whatever of like hey this episode is coming up with so and so later do you have any questions you want me to ask them or are you excited to see this interview or whatever that goes on the community tab so promoting is actually fairly easy but one thing I noticed with YouTube that this kind of goes over a lot of hits, they show you how to promote on their platform. I think that's why me on YouTube, I haven't been as successful as I thought I would be a lot sooner. I don't know. I haven't been as consistent, you know, I'm getting better at it, but all of these strategies tell you how to promote on YouTube. They didn't say go promote on social media. I mean, they do say it a little bit, but they give you a full breakdown of like all of this stuff and how you do it on YouTube. So I think that's something that's really important to understand is 
YouTube wants you to stay on YouTube. And I don't think it's a bad thing because it's one of the most profitable ways to create content, right? So these are the promotion strategies. And if you want to look over all of them and all the details, I have the whole guideline link down in the description down. Forgive the small writing. I know, I know. I'm getting used to this again. I'm getting used to it. Content creation. This is a huge, huge part of the process. Audio versus video. YouTube says you can put like just the audio up and then use a static image or whatever it is. But they literally tell you that you will get two times the amount of views as somebody that only puts their audio up. So like I know there's a lot of hosting platforms where you can post straight to YouTube from the podcast and it's just the audio with your show logo. But if you do actual video, you're going to get twice as many views, right? Like it's a ridiculous, like, I mean, think about that, the kind of engagement you get. And then do you want to watch a YouTube video where you're just looking at a picture? Even me listening to podcasts, I want to listen to the show and then be able to see the person that's talking. That, that just makes it better for me personally. Then you got different types of content. Now I'll put the three that I think every podcaster can add into their content creation strategy. If you're just doing interviews or solo content on YouTube, you can take things to a different level. You can use reaction content, Q and A, like we already see Q and A's, we see it all the time. And then lives. I think if you add those three into your content, and not doing all of them obviously, but choose one or two, that could really help you grow. I started doing reaction videos and it really, really helps my channel like a lot, tremendously. And I think you should have reaction videos. And this is the thing, if you're thinking I can't do that, you should just do reaction videos around the, whatever it is that you're into. And what I mean by that is this, right? So if you have a relationship podcast, it's a ton of content for you to react to, but you're probably thinking if I have a movie show, what do I react to? You don't always have to react to movies right? You can react to TV shows. You can react to somebody else's reaction. We see that all the time now, but whatever your category is, start reacting to popular content in that space because that helps you get discovered. Now you don't have to take the audio from that video and put it on your RSS feed on your podcast, but having it on your YouTube channel is going to help you get discovered. And if you have a reaction playlist that's booming and doing really well, your other content will do better. Right? That literally has happened for me. Now, that's one I can attest to because I started doing reactions like four or five months ago and it did really well. I had to stop some personal stuff, but it works. Q and A's lives. We know what that is. You don't need me to cover that. Now, another thing that they broke down the tier system, this was incredible to me. I love how they kind of gave us this explanation to kind of give you a bird's eye view of what'll help you grow your channel. So they had something where it's like monthly, weekly and evergreen content. Evergreen content is more of the stuff that's like, I say evergreen content should be educational. And I think everybody in any market can break down something in their industry and educate people on it. I believe anybody can do that. If it's comedy, you teach people how to be better comics. You break down how to set up the comedy business. You break down how to go on a comedy tour. You talk about your experiences being on stage, right? Evergreen content to me is just educational content. And this could be about anything. It doesn't have to just be about business and entrepreneurship. I do it about podcasting and I'm working on doing it with startups. Literally the same thing. If you're in music, teach people how to set up distribution, teach them why getting a record deal could be bad. Teach them what a 360 deal is, all of that stuff. Teach them how to get studio time. Evergreen content is educational content. Look at it that way. And then I know you're probably thinking, well, what if something changes? If it does change, you come back and make another video breaking down what has changed, why it's good or why it's bad. Simple stuff. I've been doing that part for years and it works. I'm telling you that part works. Then you got weekly content and the weekly stuff is more of the, you know, the promotional stuff where, like I said, the reaction videos, right? So if you got one piece of evergreen content a week and then one reaction video a week, that's already two really good pieces of content because the person that watches you react to literally the newest album that came out for your music podcast, you're just talking about the album, what you like, what you don't like, all that. They watch their reaction video, right? That person probably is also interested in learning about the record industry. They want to learn why record labels are so bad or why record deals are so bad now. Now you've got somebody watching two types of content on your channel. They become a super fan. Then you tie in the monthly, and this is where you can take things to another level. You want to bring in experts. You want to bring in somebody that has the pull, somebody famous if you can, like somebody that's trending in your industry. I'm a good example of this, somebody like Ryan Leslie is, some of you know who Ryan Leslie is. If you're, in, if you're into music and 
the contracts and stuff and all the behind scenes stuff of the music industry, you probably know who Ryan Leslie is. Russ is another example. Bring in one of those artists that has been successful and had a really good career that most people don't know about. And bring in the artist that, you know, is relevant in a space because they put in a lot of work and stuff and they did things in an unconventional way. So they can tell their story. You do like an interview on a channel. Those three types of content will help your channel explode. I've done two of them. I'm now adding in the like the celebrity part of it. Listen, I know that it works, so I can only imagine what it looks like with consistency and the right planning and all of that stuff. And I'll be honest, I'm not the best at thumbnails. That's why I'm hiring somebody to do that for me. I would probably have like 50,000 subscribers if I had better thumbnails, man. My thumbnails are terrible. <laughs> So this is a content creation strategy you could be following. And I think if you follow this method, then you could take all the audio and put it on your RSS feed, right? Educational content, have the reaction videos. You could post that on the RSS feed if you want to. I, I don't think it's that bad. Or if you just do Q and A or lives, I wouldn't post that on the RSS feed. And then you have your celebrity interviews. You have your big name guests and all that stuff. That's perfect. Now you have a nice assortment of content that people can consume when they come to your channel. I mean, think about how dope that is, man. You're really going to grow really, really fast because this right here is a mixture of content. It's not just one type of content every week. And then if you follow the clip strategy, this one video becomes two, this video becomes two, this video becomes three. Now, instead of posting just once or twice a week, you can post two, three videos every day. I know it's a ridiculous amount of content. I know I'm probably the only madman that's gonna do it this way, but I think this is how you become one of them crazy profitable podcasters. I wanna end with a story real quick. Matt Barnes was on the, I think it's I Love Coffee podcast with, I think his name is Stephen Graham. And he talked about how they were able to double up their show with sponsors. And I think this is a monetization part that nobody's paying attention to. When YouTube grows and podcasting becomes more relevant, you can now have sponsors on the video and on the audio. So let me put this on the board. I want to do some math for you. Okay, so here's a breakdown of what the math could look like if you have a sponsor for your video and your audio. I wanted to break this down and it's obviously a lot more layers to it and the pricing could be different. This is just for example purposes. Now, I've never been sponsored on YouTube, but from what I know from my research and people I've talked to, it's the same as podcasting. So pre-rolls 50 bucks on both and in the mid roll for a podcast i will usually charge more than a pre-roll because it's in the middle of the show it's interrupting the content so that'll be 125 right then over here you got the youtube ads plus the mid roll and the pre-roll right because you're going to make money from that once you get monetized that's 250 now this is from one piece of content right now just imagine it i'm not saying you want to put this on all your clips not even every episode but let's just say you did if you have three episodes a week and you're making let's just say for example purposes you're making four hundred dollars and you probably make way more than that i'm being generous with that let's say you make four hundred dollars for every full episode you put out of your show if you do the three week we talked about that's twelve hundred dollars a week right that's twelve hundred dollars a week from for three long form pieces of content and again this is for basic like numbers purposes it probably is nowhere near mathematically like like i know the sponsor numbers are right for and youtube could be different but for podcasting i know that to be factually true i've done sponsorships a lot now let's just say it's four hundred dollars that's twelve hundred dollars a week from three pieces of content you still make money from the clips from the ads and stuff and you could sponsor those if you wanted to you can sell that as a whole nother sponsorship now your channel is ridiculously profitable and if we just take the three main videos you're making about five thousand a month right from posting three videos a week with three episodes a week with this numbers, right? These numbers right here get you about five grand a month with three pieces of content per week. Now, again, this is the basic, this is, a, I think this would be like the beginner level because I've seen people with their YouTube ads, they're making like $20,000 a video. I've seen crazy numbers like that. It really depends on the industry and all of that stuff. I won't get into that, but this is just a simple breakdown of what the monetization could look like for podcasters because you might not be able to just get the sponsorship on your audio because you know it's hard to do that so i'm not going to say like it's super easy but on the video side if your video blows up that's going to help the audio now you can get different sponsors for both 
And this is something that a lot of these big name podcasters are doing. So I'm just excited for this, man. I'm going to do a part two to finish breaking down the YouTube guide. But this right here is kind of what I want you to see. Like, this is what it could look like long term. Not for every show. It's not guaranteed or anything. I'm not saying that. But this is the possibility that we got now that YouTube is taking podcasting seriously. So, again, the guide is down below. If you want to connect with me, I'm on Twitter at Chris Podcasting. I'll see you next time.